Hello and welcome. My name is John Hobby. Welcome to the Great Poker Chip Adventure. Today we're talking about the Crown Laurel Chips. And instead of playing poker, we're going to play some craps. And this might be new to some of you. So those of you familiar with it, I'm going to go a little slow. Please be patient, all right? For those of us that are new to craps. All right, so in order to shoot the dice, you need to place a line bet. Let's just say we're the only ones at the table, all right? So dealer will give you the dice. And you need to establish a point. So you need to throw the dice. You need to throw it all the way down to the pyramid rubber at the other end, but because we're making a video, I'm gonna cheat a little, I'm just gonna drop it here in front of us, all right? So you can see there is a six the hard way, all right? Now, the point is off right now, so this will be off. They'll turn it to on, and they'll put this on the six, okay? It's off camera, I'm just gonna put this right here for now. <laughs> now, with a six, Okay, there are seven ways. So the idea is with a pass line, you want to roll this number, the point that you establish before you roll a seven. There are what, six ways to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there are six ways to roll a seven and there are five ways to roll a six. So you can place free odds on your bet right here in the, in the neighborhood, it varies on the casino, but usually I just, for simplicity, just bet, bet five times my initial bet, right? Free odds, these pay true odds, which is really rare. I think this might be the only bet in the casino that pays true odds. Anyway, <laughs> so if you roll a six before a seven, this pays, this is five nickels here. So this would pay 30, right? So this is a $25 bet and it would pay 30. The past line bet would pay one to one. So if you won that, you would get um, 35 for your initial $30 bet. All right, well, there you go. So let's see what happens, all right? So our line bets established here. We got our free odds bet right there. And what did we roll? Wow, box cars. All right, well, that doesn't affect our bet at all. For the hard way, that doesn't affect our bet. Are you guys interested in craps? Yo, 11. Um, if you're interested in craps, let me know. Maybe we can make some craps videos. There's so much out there. I mean, I'm not sure. Seven, all right, so we sevened out. New shooter, you know, so we lost that bet. There you have it. Crown Laurels, how do they do? What do you think of these chips? I have my thoughts, but as usual, let's roll in all kinds of chips coming from every angle here. We got them just spread around everywhere. Excuse the mess. This is kind of dirty. We're playing with this. We're shooting some craps on Friday. It is Monday currently, May, whatever it is early May, <laughs> some Monday, early May, 2015. And we were shooting some craps. We were obviously with play money. We were playing with the Tiki Kings. So, you know, it was like thousands flying around everywhere. It was fun. Anyway, we had a ball teaching people how to play craps. It's so funny how craps is an interesting game. A lot of the serious people who think they're going to make a living gambling steer clear of craps because they're like, well, there's the casino advantage, whatever. Well, there's a word I'm going to introduce. It's called fun. Google it if you are not familiar with it. But I, I have some good subscribers. I suspect everybody watching this that is one of my subscribers has a good grasp of this concept of fun. It seems like I'm missing something. My sample said, oh, here, it's right here. It's right under my nose. All right. So let's jump into it. This is a 39 millimeter chip that weighs roughly 10 grams, all right? It came in, my measurements came in a little less for this set. But a 10 gram chip at 39 millimeters and they're ceramic, all right? I throw the numbers for quality control up as usual. Across denominations, I've had no problems worth mentioning. The other thing that I always talk about with spinners is this idea of spinners. Where are my famous example of spinners? Right here, Nile Club, all right? So these Nile Club, let's grab some ones while we're at it. We don't wanna discriminate against denominations here. The Nile Club are famous for not being perfectly flat, at least the sets I get. You can see they just, there are lots of spinners, um, like merry-go-round, like ball bearing levels of spinners on the Nile Club. Not super flat, all right? And I understand, yeah, so there's just little high points on them. With these, you know, it kind of has some of that effect with the crown laurels. Oh, I know what I'm missing. With the sample set, they also sent this massive 25,000 chip that's larger than the others. 
I measured it, but I forgot the number. Whatever. I'll roll it in post-production. But you can see, definitely larger, 25,000 chip. That's what I'm missing. So you can see, you know, these have the same problem. They are textured. The texturing is consistent, unlike, again, the Nile Club. So for spinners, kind of below average. For the texture, very average. Let's see if we can get a shot of the texture here. Very much, and I'm going to make this comparison a couple of times, very much like the scroll chips. Let's show you a different one here. You can see some, some discoloration there. Here's the 500. Look at that texture. By way of comparison, let's just compare this to a scroll. So you can see this is for texture comparison. They both have very consistent textures, meaning all the denominations have the same texture, very reasonable. So for texture, I'm going to give it average across the board for all the denominations here. And these, again, very similar to the scrolls, have very reasonable dimples. The dimples aren't noticeable. I did have a few, just a couple of the Tiki Kings that had some noticeable dimples. Dimples are part of the manufacturing process. It's like where they injected the plastic. These are just hard plastic chips. They're called ceramics. They're not, you know, true ceramic in the sense of you bake them and they become glass-like. They're just plastic. So you can see the dimples. You know, they color well. They don't peel. I believe these are... Now, ceramics... <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe ceramics are made with a dyeing process where they actually dye the chip. And so some people get a little nervous when they see those dimples. It feels like it might be some sort of wrap and you can peel this, like unwrap it. But I've never had that problem. So they don't peel. The dimples are fine. The dimples on these are very average. I mean, Nevada Jacks have very similar reasonable... Yeah, I mean, all the ceramics that I've, that I've, that I've rolled in front of the camera have had very reasonable dimples. Even the Tiki Kings, even though there were a couple, there were a few that, that weren't perfect. So dimples average. Again, that's kind of a ceramics only thing that I discuss. Obviously, dimples don't exist on clay chips, Paulsons, lots of the other chips that I review. Inlay, all right, the inlay, they're all consistent. Uh, I was looking at these, and to the best of my examination, it looked like they also had some of this, these imperfections where they're not perfectly centered. But you're talking about such small, tiny amounts that it's almost not worth mentioning. And they did a good job hiding it here. So they don't stick out like a sore thumb. Okay, So if you look up here, you can see there's more green space between that point and the edge than this bottom right point in that edge. Ooh, three thousandths of an inch. Like I said, not a big deal. Just, but consistently, all ceramics have those minor differences, minor centering issues. But minor centering issues aren't really an issue to me, so average. I mean, like I said, they all have it. The edge marks, okay? The edge marks are all consistent for quality I'm talking about here. They're all consistent. And to the best of my understanding here, I've looked at these, and they're not lined up in any sort of meaningful way. So you can see the one here is kind of lined up there, but this denomination is not lined up with that edge mark. Is that a big deal? No, not at all. See, this number is lined up with that denomination. So the edge marks are not lined up, and but they're consistent, right? I've had no problems with the overlap. A lot of these will have an overlap on the design, but not to a point of being noticeable or totally ruining the look of the chip. So you can see the edges right here. If I find a good example of the overlap that I'm talking about, I'll roll in a picture. So quality control then. Oh, the last thing we want to talk about, <laughs> the shoulders. Okay, very scroll-like in that they are slightly beveled. Let's see if we can align these. It's always hard to do on camera because I'm reaching around this big fat camera of mine and tripod. 
So the shoulders are beveled. You can see how they're not squared off shoulders. So there are the little gaps here between the corners and the shoulders will be more than something that's slightly more square. For example, Nile Club have pretty square shoulders. So they're not as beveled. Does that make a difference? Yeah, maybe if you're big into shuffling, it might make a little bit of difference. Some people like it, some people don't. Overall quality control, very average for a ceramic chip, which is good. And we'll talk about price and all of that later, but that's good, okay? Good quality control. Design, now, this is a can of worms. And as usual, design is a preference thing. See this chip right here? This chip, so I pocketed these, this sample set in particular, and I showed it to a lot of my friends that we hang out with. And one of the ladies I hang out with, she loved this purple chip. She loved it. This purple 500. She looked at this and looked at this and she's like, wow, I'm going to steal this. And she almost did. She loved the color. She said, this is the prettiest chip that I've ever shown her. And that was quite a statement considering I've rolled everything in front of them. You know, it's like every single chip that I've rolled in front of the camera, she's seen. And so it's just like, wow, to say that about this one chip was pretty, was pretty intense. She loved the design of these chips. She said these were the best and her favorite. Okay. Now, my opinion about the design of these chips is I don't like it. They seem to be copying this radial design kind of from the theme of the EPT chips, the European Poker Tour, right? They have designs that, you know, they're kind of radial, but they're oftentimes tricolor and they are more detailed and in my opinion, better designed than these. These are kind of washed out in my opinion. I would like to see some more boldness. Uh, a great case of that is the ones, all right? This is just blah in my book, all right? Look, it goes from gray to gray to gray. And they have this little black ring here and this laurel crown design. Numbers with no denominations, which is important for a lot of people who don't live in the United States or Canada or wherever they use, else use it, you know, their country's dollar. For example, the Eurozone, the... British with their precious pound. But to me, it's just too gray, too blah. How come there's nothing about this that's bold? Nothing. It's, you know, the crown is consistent across every single chip. All right, well, that's the theme of the chips. All right, well, fair enough. Compare that to the one of a Nile Club. Look, compared to the Nile Club, I think are pretty drab, but compared to this, this is super bold. Look, you got colors here, you got white, black, Nice contrast, clear denomination, and look, the Egyptian theme, which differs by denomination. All right, well, you know, roughly the same price. And yet, to me, this is a way, the Nile Club is a way better design than the Crown Laurels, right? What about the scroll? Oh dear, here we go again. Well, at least, you know, white and blue and black and the burst pattern. To me, this is a more exciting chip than this. It kind of, you know, and at first glance, it kind of captures that elegance of those EPT chips. But after you look at them, it just doesn't get there for me. All right. And you can argue that some of them, you know, may be more bold than others. Ugh, you know, and even then I question that. Some of them to me, like to me, the purple one. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to step on some people's toes here. Um, and she's going to punch me in the face for it. But to me, these are some of the worst. They're just bleh. It goes from purple to purple to dark purple to purple to black, just kind of in such a gradient that you never really notice it. There's no excitement there. And like, to me, the crown and the laurel little thing here doesn't excite me in any way. Who cares? So for design, for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rate these slightly below average. It seemed like they took a good idea and kind of botched botched it when they were copying it all right so design i'm gonna give it slightly below average but design is a subjective thing if you like the look it doesn't matter what i think oh and speaking of weirdness look at this so gray to darker than to black and then here's black to gray to gray to gray and it's just like wow there's a lot of excitement in there uh by way of comparison and maybe also let me see if i can reach these here i'm gonna pull in some pulsons here Oh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Look at the, look at this 100. Okay. 
Now I know these are not comparable, but I'm comparing them. Or what about this one? Here's a ceramic. To me, that's way more exciting than this. But to each their own, right? That's why design is so subjective. And you're entitled to your own opinion. You can leave a comment, and, and I would encourage you to leave your comment about <laughs> what's going on here with design. But slightly below average for me on the design. I might, you know, I, I've mentioned, you know, I've shown you the, the edge marks, the two edge marks, the denominations, all on there for the design. The numbers are okay. I'm not a big fan of the numbers. I base usually my <laughs> my interpretation of what I'm seeing based on color on the poker table, not these tiny little itty bitty numbers. And something else that was worth mentioning when we were playing with these, it looks like or these numbers are awfully small. So again, it's kind of color based. Just, you know, when you get very weak sauce coloration, sometimes it's not the best. But small numbers, you know, is that really a big deal? No, but there's no denomination, which will be important to some of you. So like I said, now moving on to materials. They're ceramic, hard plastic. Uh, <laughs> we've kind of beat this, you know, into the ground already with other chips. It's a hard plastic uh, dyed. They're not really that big of an, you know, it's not really that big of an issue because they feel so much like scrolls and look so much like scrolls. They even have that same texture pattern on them. Um, we haven't had any wear that suggests that they'll wear any differently than the scrolls. And if you watch my scroll ceramic review, you'll see the wear that we put on them. And the texture that's on them looks like some sort of clear coat they put on top of the actual ceramic chip. So your initial wear will not wear out the coloration on the chips, which is, you know, great for materials. There, but yeah, there's nothing about this material that jumps out to put it ahead a of any other company. The company doesn't have any transparency on whether the, on whether there was any lead or any of the other harmful chemicals in the dye that they used. They just don't say. So I can't give them above average, right? Like other companies, like the classic poker chip company, these are actually the Key West stock set from that company. You can watch my review on these. These actually, the company miraculously has transparency. They say what materials they use. It's brass. And they tell you you know, lead-free on there, great, all right? Love that transparency. So, average on materials. Durability and wear, we already kind of discussed it. They wear very similar to a scroll chip. <laughs> I haven't had any problems. They're ceramics. They'll wear, they'll last you a good long, whole, big, massive chunk, half of your life, easily, if not your whole life, depending on how much wear and use you put into them. Obviously, if you play baseball with them, they're not going to last as long as if you just play poker and craps with them. But I like ceramics, and I feel comfortable throwing ceramics around on our craps table just because they're less likely to show wear than some high-end chips such as Paulson's, ASM, now uh, classic poker chips, or you know various other true clay, compression-molded clay sets. So even China clays show wear more than these will. Very durable set. Now, we're talking about competitive options and value. Uh, the first thing I'm going to roll in is its twin sister, all right? So, yes, you can go with these laurel crowns if you like, or you can go with these scrolls if you like. Uh, which one would I choose? It's kind of a coin flip at this point. Now, something I should mention here with competitive options. Whoever makes, I don't know what company or factory or however this works, but whoever makes these sets, thank you. Thank you for making these sets. We need some of these low-end ceramics. The low-end ceramics kind of fit in the middle-class chip, right? So you're looking to spend, uh, is early 2015, roughly $150. You know, is that with shipping or not? It's hard to say. It depends where you go to get them. But you're looking at roughly $150 for a set of 300 of either one of these chips, generally. I think it might be a little bit more now. But prices vary so much. I mean, I can't tell you right here in this video exactly what price you'll see online. So they're competitively priced, and I, I'm glad that they have two options at this price range. I wish they would make, even with the same chip, with the same texture pattern, you know, the same manufacturing process, if they had an, yet another two or three designs to compete with these, right? Because everybody's tastes are different. Like, I'm not a big fan of these. I would choose the design of the scrolls over these, even though I don't think the scrolls are that spectacular. Does that make sense? So yes, thank you for making these. I appreciate that they make a variety of these chips, and I hope I hope that this part of the market segment grows. All right. Now, other competitive options: scrolls are like the sister chip, right? 
I like the design of these more, so I'd go with the scrolls, but it's just a preference thing. The Nile Club. Oh, maybe I should get the sample set. Do I have a sample set kicking around here somewhere? Let's see if I can pull this out. So the scrolls, that I think is an incomplete sample set. We'll throw a five in here at the end. All right. So the Nile Club are also an interesting chip at a similar price, and they... To, and they to me are way more interesting than these. However, the quality control on a Nile Club is kind of, eh, I'm not sure if I'd really spring for the Nile Club. But now that I look at them, of course, yeah, all right, yeah, okay, it's an over, yeah, go for the Nile Club, right? If I was choosing between these two, again, I'm glad that they make a variety of chips. And I would love it if the company that makes Nile Club, I don't know who it is, if they released another design with the same style chip, all right? Despite the problems with consistency of texture and despite the spinner problems, you, I mean, spinners are pretty common at this price segment for ceramic chips, fine, okay? But I'd love to see another design on these chips even. So, uh, you know, it really comes down to preference when you're talking about this segment. And obviously, if you don't like ceramics, and I'd recommend you get a sample set if you're not sure, you can go with China Clays. This is a Milano, some Milanos right here. And you can see we've been playing with some of these more than others. Some of them have just, you know, thumb juice, lotion, all sorts of junk on them from lots and lots of play. And others, this package is newly opened. So, China clays, uh, do we have anything else to represent some China clays, some desert palms, kind of in the middle class range. So, you know, whatever, you know, get some China clays, compare them. Milanos are easy to find, a good sample set to purchase if you're not sure about the feel of the two, which one you like more. And then there's all the low-end metal insert chips, uh, dice chips, you know, stuff like that. Oh, look what I found. <laughs> this is anti. I don't even know if they make these anymore. Look at this. Bicycle chips. Look at all the dust on here. This thing has been sitting for who knows how long. Look at these heinous chips. Yeah, wow. I didn't appreciate how nice, even like the dice chips were, you know, like compared to these things. Anyway, so these are like super, super low end. And then obviously, if you get a sample set of these and you don't like the feel of the ceramics, you want to move into a higher end clay. There's always Paulson's. There's, you know, they're moving into custom chip range. High end ceramics like Nevada Jack. If you do like the ceramic feel, Tiki King's ceramic stock version that you can customize if you want. You know, then that's, that's a good representation of what you would be looking at if you want to go kind of high end kind of low end. Oh, discontinued. I forgot to mention that. Why do I even roll these in anymore? I hate it because these have kind of become the standard. Las Vegas Casino uses these. These are what I'm familiar with, with my family and everything. So there you have it. Do I feel like these are good value? Yes. If you like the design, they're a very reasonable chip. Especially, I think this has a lot of potential to grow in an international market as well because they don't have that annoying dollar sign. These can be tournament chips. They can just represent chips, five chips. You know, play money. That's what I play, play money. So who cares? At home anyway, you know, if you're going to go into a casino, that's, you know, where I recommend <laughs> gambling. Just because, yeah, my preference. So, yes, if you like them, purchase them. There's, I can't find anything wrong with these to a point where I would say, no, absolutely avoid them. Now, shuffling. Um, yeah, you can shuffle them. They're easy to shuffle, right out of the package, no break in time required. Do I even have a stack of 25? I don't even know. I don't know how many this is. There you go, okay. Um, you're, it's pretty easy to shuffle, even larger stacks, you know, shuffle very nicely. How many is this? Let's count. Uh, kind of cutting sideways here. Oh, that was 20. All right, there you go. To me, whether chip can shuffle easily or not out of package isn't does doesn't affect doesn't influence my purchase decision. But I don't know. People might want to know. And finally, sound. All right, we'll do a sound test. Compare it to all sorts of nonsense. And 
Tell me what you think. All right, so let's start low end. <laughs> no, we're not going to do the bicycle chips. Not worth our time. All right, start low end here. Dice chips. Uh, representing metal insert chips, Monte Carlo. Sorry, Monte Carlo Poker Club. I realize there are multiple varieties of Monte Carlo chips out there. All right. Representing some middle class chips. Let's just roll in a whole bunch here. Grab the Milanos. We'll grab the Nile Club. We'll grab Desert Palms. Good enough. All right. Those were the scroll chips. Here are the Milano. Next, Nile Club. Desert Palms. All right, let's move into some higher end chips. Let's do Top Hat, just for reference, if you want to know what, you know, similar to a casino chip. Oh, let's roll in the Key West chips. Let's roll in the Tiki. Let's roll in the Nevada Jacks. All right, that's a pretty good representation of really expensive chips. Those were the Nevada Jacks you just heard. Paulson Classics. Key West. Top Hat and Cane, and finally the Tiki Kings. And there you have it, the Laurel, Crown Laurel Ceramic Poker Chips. Yeah, you know, if you like them, they're a very reasonable ceramic set. Nothing spectacular about them, and I don't like the design, but you can make your own decision based off of this. Oh, something else I should mention about availability. Phew, glad I remembered this. I was looking online, and it's nigh impossible to find the 25s separate, right? Apparently they sell them in sets, but I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if somebody just bought them all up, hoping that they could monopolize them and sell them for way more than they're worth. But these were kind of hard to find, so that may affect that availability of certain denominations may affect your purchase decision. Something to consider. It's always important to consider what denominations you need in your set and oh one more thing <laughs> i'm looking around here <laughs> the great thing about ceramics is you don't end up with piles and i mean piles of stuff like this this one just broke recently in my fingers i was just flipping it around and it broke oh this here's one i haven't represented this isn't part of the great poker chip adventure but this is a set i own and you can see this broke in my fingers so there you have it nice thing about ceramics good durable set <laughs> thanks so much for watching we'll be back with so much more gambling gaming interesting things here on this channel my name is john hobby